Appalachia. A place where we're mighty proud of our history. We try to preserve it as much as possible. Now here in McMinnville, Tennessee, Warren County, if you go to the Warren County Fairgrounds, there's a little hidden gym. There's a little village called Fairfield where folks have put together a little village and even added a whole lot of antiques. Kind of give folks an idea of what town looked like back in the old days. And I thought you folks would really enjoy it. So let's have a look around. Right here at our first little stop, a beautiful little church. Walking in this old church brings back a lot of fond memories of being a young. Folks would come from miles around, horseback, little buggies, and things like that. Just to go to the prayer meeting. Some folks just refer to it as going to preaching. There's a beautiful little old hymnal book. Most of them usually, all the lamps, all the lights they had was these little coal oil lamps. I remember this stuff fairly well. But it ain't like it was today. A lot different. I remember having to go to church. And when we was outside, we was allowed to play a little bit, but Lord, when we was inside, you sat down, you sat still, you minded, you listened, and you didn't speak unless you was called upon. Mighty pretty church here. They got some really pretty artwork here, the Lord too. Beautiful rendition of the commandments. This little picture right here, I don't, I'm not sure if that was how the building once originally looked or if it was just a postcard. I remember singing a lot of these old songs too. One thing I did notice is it just had a feel of love to it. I've been to many churches before. A lot of them you can go to, and a lot of them was beautiful little churches. But then you got some that you run up on occasionally that you can just feel the Lord's light and a lot, whole lot of love in it. these little curtains right here they're real pretty and they're handmade most time back in them old days a lot of the women folk would get together and they'd make stuff like that to donate to the church a lot of folks that could draw pretty good would often do like little artwork and things like that just anything they could do for the church or each other. I know somebody had put together some pretty little bottoms for the pews there. I remember seeing old timey dresses like made out of the same thing that uh, curtains is made out of. Folks back in sure had a lot of talent because anything they had, they had to grow or make themselves. Church gospel songs and hymns. That's an old one there too. Pretty old book, boy. And one thing about it, Sure did a mighty good job with this place. I 
I'm awful thankful for a lot of the townsfolk that donated a whole lot of this stuff. Really old things and stuff, so. That way well, younger folks nowadays kind of get an idea of what it was like back here. Mighty pretty church. But, as you can see, there's still more to explore. So let's go. This little building right here got a lot of old antique stuff in it too. This is where they displayed a whole lot of stuff about the town's 4-H history, things like that. Got an awful lot of talented people, that's for sure. Up here seems to be what looks like an old meat cleaver. An old hook to either drag hay or move big sides of meat. It's an old hand crank drill. Right here, it's just all kinds of little knickknacks from geology stuff, tractors, the scale. Handmade fishing lure, an old Coca Cola bottle. I think I actually have a few of them old Coca Cola bottles laying around places. I just absolutely love going to these little places like this. I really hope you folks are enjoying this and kind of like an on location kind of thing. Now let's take a visit to the Fairfield Village Post Office. Beautiful little place here. And you see they got scales and on different size scales. <laughs> got a whole bunch of them. That's how they weigh their packages and stuff like that back then. I remember hearing stories of my grandparents talking that said that a long, long time ago, said they'd walk for miles and miles just to go into town, just to mail a letter. Said sometimes you'd have to walk for a long ways just to get to a mailbox, just to mail one off. But a lot of times folks would walk all the way into town and everything just to have something to do. A lot of times, folks back in, they really cared for one another, so a lot of people would be walking, so it weren't uncommon for folks to be out going places and run into somebody you know. They said it weren't uncommon to see people just standing around or sitting around on the side of the road, just sitting around talking. Sometimes, the old mailman would stop by when somebody got a letter. And even though he was on a on a schedule just like just like they are today, he said that he'd usually sit around and jaw a little while. And that's folks how they're doing. These old PO boxes here go back quite a spell. They 
They look a mite different than they do nowadays, don't they? It's really neat because these are donated by people, so they was actually used. But I can't help but think all the people that used these little boxes like that, you know, what was they like? You know, how many people had come to them mailboxes every day or once a month? You know, how, what was their life like? Sometimes people would walk expecting to get a letter. It'd be the happiest day of their life. Maybe from a loved one, a lover, or something like that. You never really know. McMillan Electric System. This is how it would have looked probably a long time ago, or things they would have had in the shop back then, and things like that. A lot of these old things I can remember seeing in houses and things like that when I was growing up. My wife and I actually had an old yellow table like that and had the chairs with it. They was all in good shape. Boy, we thought we was high on the hog. You look at this old sewing machine. An old town, how many dresses and things that poor old machine sold over the years. Not a bit of telling. That's like them old washing machines right there. Oh, I'll tell you what. My fingers and them old ringers in the top, because them thing right there, right little red thing is on top. That's two little ringers, and you pull the laundry out of the barrel there and run it through the ringers. And it was class A finger mashers, let me tell you. I am glad a whole lot of folks donated and loaned these things so people could see them. Seeing these old radios reminded me of a story. I remember my grandparents saying that when they first got married, a long, long time ago, moved into the first house together, said they had a little radio, had one little battery. Said they'd save that for the weekends and the evenings, and my Mima would listen to her soaps. But for the most part, said they sat out on the porch in the evenings and said they sat out there and sang. Said they wound up being they sung real good together. So much so that later on they found out to other folks down through the holler, what they didn't know is folks could hear them. It echoed down through there. They didn't realize that. So they get out there and sang and sang. And folks would see them in town and say, Boy, you did some mighty good singing yesterday evening. Well, how did you know? I said, well, we heard you. <laughs> I said, it echoes down through that holler. Well, they never did stop a singing, but <laughs> they said if they had known that, they probably would have sung a whole lot quieter. <laughs>
thing about this, if you look around, you'll notice all kinds of stuff. Even just like on the side of the little road there. Like right here. An old piece of farming equipment. Test his knowledge. Anybody know what this is? Leave me a comment in the comment section below if you know what it is. You know, people work these old farms. Some mighty, mighty tough people. Strong will. Most of them be up every morning before the sun even come up. time dawn broke. They'd already had quite a few chores done. I'm sure a lot of you folks still does that to this day. Anytime you do a homestead and things like that, awful lot of work. Take a step into the old newspaper, Southern Standard. October 1879, Rufus P. Baker established the Southern Standard in McMinnville, Tennessee. The paper appeared every Saturday and had an annual subscription fee of one dollar. Mr. Baker hired a Dr. John R. Payne as his editor. Southern Standard, it went through quite a few owners. But after a great fire, and finally moved to a better location, it still runs to this day. Over here at the Fairfield Telephone Office, a whole lot of really neat old phones in there. I guess right here is old switchboard. Somebody be sitting there 24/7, placing calls to wherever people need to call. One thing about these old phones, whenever phones first come out and were first introduced, most folks had things what they call the party line. Now, a lot of you may be wondering what a party line is. Well, that's when the phone line would come through an area, a neighborhood, things like that. And folks would kindly pitch in to pay the bill. But the thing about it was, that made it so aggravating, is it was a shared line, so if you was on a con you was having a conversation, anybody could pick up their phones and listen to it. Or if you needed to place a call, you'd have to wait till other folks got done with their conversations. I remember <laughs> they said, my grandparents said that when they first got their party line, Boy, they dreaded having to use a phone call, especially if it was a very important call they needed to place. See, because there was an elderly lady that lived not far from them that was part of that party line. And she loved to talk. And they said, 
Said bless her heart, she was sweet as she could be. Just as sweet as the day is long. But boy, oh boy, they said, I tell you what. They said it'd be way up in the night before you get to use the phone. <laughs> You know, it is amazing how phones have come along over the years. There's some old hard hats and things like that and stuff whenever they have to work on the telephone lines. Some of the earlier workers right there. Some mighty hard work. Back in them days, definitely had a hard day's work no matter what they did. Right here is no phone booth. That's something you don't see nowadays for sure. Now is it just me, or do you expect Marshall Dillon and Fester to come along any minute? Right here would be the old furniture store. Kinda neat thinking, walk into a store, and you see stuff like this, a little bit of everywhere. But at the time, it was the most high tech thing. People sought after all kinds of stuff like that. Brand new, top of the line. Some folks would even put back orders on them. You know, I remember going into little stores and stuff like this with my granny and pa when I was a little bitty fella. And I always wondered just how in the world pa could go in these places and walk out with just about anything you wanted and didn't have no money. I thought either he was magic or they just liked him enough they just gave it to him. I remember one day I asked him about it. He started laughing. He said, well, I wish they'd give it to me. He said, no, he said, I got it on a ticket, which meant he had a line of credit there. Now back in, most stores, almost every store you went to, most folks could get them a line of credit. Which, like with most places, they'd have to build it up over a little time, but like I said, most folks had them a ticket. I remember old stoves like that right there. Remember them? A lot of me, uh, I remember old wood stoves that the eyes was cast iron. Oh Lord, there's another one of them finger mashers. Well, I reckon the old town will be complete without an undertaker. Harry High was founded by John W. High in 1925. They said that Mr. High moved to the area. Wilson County, Tennessee, in the early 1920s. It started that in the back of a furniture store. He built his reputation on honesty, integrity, and had a deep commitment to the community and all of his people. And back in, that's how you got along. There's a picture of Mr. High right there. You know, look at this old stuff, it, it kind of gave you the creeps a little bit. Now, remember one story said this undertaker said he had to go to a, a hospital in 
pick up a pick up a corpse. Well, he said he was coming home. He said he had the back of an old wagon in, in, in an old wooden coffin. And they said it was uh, coming up a big old storm, lightning, wind, uh, howling, and everything. He said, boy, he said it was awful creepy, getting dark, and lightning, thunder, just shaking the ground, spooking the horse. I said he kept thinking, boy, whew, I'll be glad when I get back. Said he kept trying to go as fast as he could. Said the old wind god where it was shaking that old buggy. Every time that lightning would flash, that old horse would get spooked. Well, I said that he got about a couple miles to his funeral home. And said that he got there coming around a the bend there. As soon as he did, said it opened up. He come out from under all the trees and it opened, you know, an open area. Said there's a clap of lightning and boy, it just whoosh, splashed across the sky and thunder jarred the ground. Said about that time, that old corpse set up. Said he heard something. He turned around. Said that man sitting there staring at him. What it was? It misdiagnosis. <laughs> he weren't dead. He said, but at the time, that ain't what I was thinking. He said, I turned around and saw that man. He said, I've never jumped off of a horse and buggy so fast in my life. He said, I'm pretty sure I run off and left my boots is still sitting there. Right here is a backdrop they would use to carry around with them when they would go to, because back in, a lot of times, they'd have folks laid out right there at home. And they'd use a little backdrop like that sometimes. But if they did come to a place like this, a funeral home light, it'd be heated by an old, an old stove like that. Off the time, an old pot belly stove or something. Whatever worked, it done the job. Then right over here, you'll see in just a second, you'll see the, uh, the day bed. So for the time that they did have somebody there, they'd have them in a suit or their overalls, you know, just whatever they were family requesting to be buried in, they'd be placed upon the day bed. Now this one right here, it's just a little homestead. Oh, I don't care to tell you, it did make me just a mite homesick. That's the kind of cabin set up right here that I grew up with. You can see that old bowl back there. It's got that little pitcher in it with a wash rag on it. Well, back in the old days, most folks, when they got up every morning, they'd use that and they'd have some water in that pitcher. They'd pour them a little dab of water in there and they'd wash their face off and stuff and everything, kind of help them get woke up. Or oftentimes, they'd kind of wash up, clean up a little bit before supper or before they went to bed, depending on how their day went. That's an old dresser of drawers right there. Mighty old, that old trunk, it's got some age to it too.
This little doll right here, there's a picture added to the end of this video. That little doll right there, I tell you what, that thing haunts your dreams. There's some dolls out there you just think, I don't know why in the world they made that. Right there you can see an old fashioned weed eater, an old sickle, a scythe, and an old rub board. An old rub board's what they used to wash out their clothes and wring them out and stuff. A lot of times they'd use a hand soap or oftentimes they all they had was just old powdered soap. Or sometimes they didn't have no soap at all. They just take their clothes stuff down to a creek. Take her old rub board down there and just scrub the best they could. Them old gourds there, they'd folks would hang them up, use them for all kinds of stuff. You could cut a hole in them, use it for a like a like a, a spoon for dip water with, or all cooking, and, you know, just all kinds of different stuff. A lot of folks just put like old beans in them or stuff and everything, made rattles and things. Now we head over to the hospital. Gonna give you an idea of what things were like back in the old days. Now, I don't care to tell you folks, I've heard some stories. How much now? You gotta give it to them. I mean, honestly, they did the best they could with what they had back in them days. But even back then, you know, they was. You know, we didn't have modern medicine, antibiotics, and things like that. Tons of people, even if they went to a hospital, sadly they'd lose their life due to infection, things like that. I mean, that right there, that, that, that's just stuff of nightmares. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. That's a kind of quick, but it's a scary. It kind of reaches in and slaps your soul around a little bit, don't it? But you know, here in Appalachia, most of us know stuff about herbs and healing and stuff like that, so most of the time we just doctor ourselves up or go to an elder and, or something, or we just look around and find us a healer. But just like any other places like it is nowadays, there was a whole lot of good doctors back in. But you look up at things like that old saw right there, there comes them nightmares again. <laughs> but you know it is kind of odd though. If you look back on some of them old medicines and stuff, you know, a lot of the things that they did have back in, well, they considered it medicine, some of the things it was made of. I mean, a lot of stuff they used back in nowadays would be considered poison. I don't know why, but for the life of me, my camera did not want to focus in on them x-ray pallets and that little tray right there. Maybe I zoomed in too far. I mean, how would you like to go to a doctor's office and they start dragging out equipment like that? I'd be about to speak to my feet and tell them, say, boys, make tracks. But 
of course, a lot of old doctors back in them days make house calls. That's where, you know, you call them, they come to your house. A lot of times, them old doctors, people be sick and ailing and stuff like that. You'd look out the window and there'd come a doctor walking up the driveway. Well, folks, it's been a real pleasure and an honor getting to sit in jail with you a little while, and I'm glad you come along with me on this little adventure. Hope you enjoy it. If you did, give me a like. And if you're new, please subscribe and share this out with all your friends and family or other somebody that, you know, somebody else that might enjoy it. <laughs> Here's some pictures. I love you bunches. God bless, and I'll catch you on the next one.